I want to talk to you about some scripture. And, uh, and it's probably something you've heard lots of times, and maybe not in the context that I am going to put it in. Um, so we're going to go to the book of Galatians, Galatians 6, 7 to 10. Um, but let's give it a little bit of context. What do we know about Galatians? Uh, most likely written by Paul. Um, there's a little bit of contention on that one, but I, given the writing style, I tend to think that it would be. Um, uh, when, um, probably 45 to 55 AD, and uh, is a very pointy letter. You know, um, if you remember the story, it was uh, Paul's first missionary journey. He goes to Galatia. Oh, that's better. Hey, that's, that's much better, fellas. I don't know whether he just turned it off or whatever, but much better. First missionary journey, Paul goes to Galatia, you know, basically starts the, you know, the, the new governor church. Um, and then at the end of his trip, which is 18 odd months, he gets a report that they have another doctrine has crept in. And that doctrine was um, uh, basically, you know, works based, um, you know, whatever. It was like a mosaic law circumcision type thing had crept back in and he was like no i told you you're free from that so his whole letter is very pointy and uh, and very clear spends the first few chapters building his you know reason why he's an apostle and and so forth and, and credibility but towards the end of galatians there's the heading for the section is, is bear one another's burdens and a bit further down in um galatians 6 7 it says this do not be deceived God is not mocked. You would have heard that before. Uh, for you reap whatever you sow. If you sow to your own flesh, you'll reap corruption from the flesh. But if you sow to the spirit, you'll reap eternal life from the spirit. And here's the bit I want to pick up on. So let us not grow weary in doing what is right. For we will reap a harvest, we'll reap at harvest time if we do not give up. So then whenever you have an opportunity, let us work for the good of all and especially for those in the family of faith. Listen, how super cool is this? I have got my old Bible here. And this Bible is the one, it's the first ever Bible that I purchased. I came to Christ on the 23rd of September 2004. And a friend, Chris Morris, shout out to you, uh, took me to the shops to buy a Bible. And I bought this one. And just from moving home, settling, moving offices, I found it. And so I'm reading out of that one today. So what does it mean, you know... Do not grow weary in doing good. You know, you've probably heard that heaps of time. I want to put it in the context of business, economy, the gifting that we have of building businesses to advance the kingdom of God. So um, what do we know? We know that when we do God's will, God's way. So when, when God's will for our lives is to use business to impact culture, when we do that God's way so righteously, we attract a favor from heaven, okay? And that favor is what opens big doors, grows our business exponentially. That is what brings the increase beyond the hard work that we're putting in ourselves, okay? So um, so that's, that's essentially what we're talking about here. But I think, you know, in terms of doing God's will, God's way, and, do, you know, finding opportunities to do good works and not growing weary, one of those things, I kind of want to build from the, from the ground up and look at some examples of what that would look like for us in business. And so to do that, I am going to use an iPad. By the way, apologies for the sound. Hashtag, we'll just blame it on Aussie internet. One, <laughs> very good, very very good. Um, <clears throat> I'll just I'll just keep going. We're doing a second camera shoot. I'll make sure we capture it, and it'll come out anyway. Are we going to bring the iPad up? Is that even an option right now? Okay, good. Cool, cool, cool. So uh, basically, um, let's look at uh, good works. All right. And then I want to build a case around what that would look like. So um, we're going to, even if you can't hear me now, you will be able to read what we're doing. 
So I think the first place that we can look at for doing good works as a believer in business is I think we need to look at our products and services, right? I believe that our products and services as believers should be the preeminent product and service in our market or in, you know, in the top. I, I, think, I, think we have to, I think we have to go with a level of excellence here um, at the very base level, you know, this is, this is before you've done anything massive for the kingdom. I think that we owe it to the marketplace to show the excellence of God in our products and services. That means that, you know, if you've got a mechanical workshop, make it the cleanest, make it the best, give people the best experience, da da da, da. Like, like, like show people what excellence looks like for you in your industry with your products and your services, okay? I think this is the foundation of doing good works. To me, there's really no point in saying, hey, I'm going to do good works by building 93 orphanages, but the people having an experience in your business do not have a great one, okay? Or they're all whinging online giving you two-star reviews because it's an inferior product or an inferior service, right? It, it, that, I, I, I think there's too much of a disparity in those to call it successful, all right? So, so number one is it's got to be in our products or services. Number two, we've got to look at the experience that our customers are having. You know, if I, I, you probably would have heard me say this, the currency of heaven is people. It's not money, right? It's people. And, you know, all the way through scripture, we are taught to care and prefer others and look after our fellow man and so forth. That scripture we just said did it, right? Do it for everybody and, you know, especially those in the family of the faith. I, I think... I think if we actually have a focus on people, um, you know, yes, they can be a profit center. Yes, they can make you money. Yes, they can do all those things. But at the same time, they have, we've got to, we've got to give our attention to God values them as much as he does us. So why wouldn't we go out of our way to say, all right, well, anybody can sell X, but we give people the experience of why. Like what, what is that? What is that? anomaly that you are going to do that makes people feel so valued during the transaction that they um that they have the best experience you know to me you know one of your options is to put a jesus fish on your business card i think it is better to see if people can work out that there's something different about you because of the experience that you give them by going the extra mile caring about them reaching out to them um, and wanting to know them as a human as much as you do a customer all right, so, so I, I, you know, to me, again, I don't think there's any point in saying I want to build 93 orphanages in Kenya if the experience people are having in your business is ho-hum and the same as everybody else in your industry, okay? This is, I think this is still entry level of what does it mean to never grow weary of doing the right thing, doing good, okay? I think it starts at this level of the business. Number three is funding your spiritual covering. Funding your spiritual covering, right? So do not, you know, do not grow weary of doing good. One of the good things that you can do and should do is making sure that your pastor, your reverend, your whoever, you know, is in your world is actually well funded. How's the sound, fellas? Is it, is it all, are we all okay? Okay, good, good, good. By the way, guys, what, what do you reckon about this little screen popping up here with my, no, my, my notes here coming in and out? By the way, if you think that's cool, give me a thumbs up in the comments because um, I can take no credit for it, but I, will, but I wanna take all the credit for it. So give me a thumbs up if you think that's cool. Um, so, 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 funding your spiritual covering. Um, you know, our pastors, um, I won't say men, you know, men, women, whatever. I mean, there are some phenomenal female pastors out there, so, y you know, yay to them. Our spiritual coverings, um, they carry a certain gift uh, and anointing to effectively intercede for us, pray for us, uh, and do warfare for us while we're in business, okay? So we're, we're doing warfare over our business. Jesus is doing intercession. He says that he'll do intercession to the Father on our behalf. But there's something really powerful when your local spiritual covering is also doing warfare for you and praying for you and breaking bread with you and interceding for your business, okay? Um, and so that's, that's kind of like their obligation, okay? To, if, if they really want to validate and um, activate their entrepreneurs in their church, then they'll be actively praying for them and sending them out and so forth. And they're probably doing that. 
but then we've got to complete the loop. All right, we've, we've got to make sure that when we go into the marketplace and we're doing warfare and we're doing a good thing and we're doing it God's way, so we're attracting the favor and our pastors are interceding for us, our business will, will prosper, they will bloom, they'll, you know, they'll, 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 you'll, you'll get deals you weren't shooting for and so forth. Our job is to make sure that we bring those spoils back in to make sure our spiritual coverings are well-funded. Your, your pastor, I'm sure, right now has a whole bunch of vision and, um, and, and wants to get it funded. And that's our job, okay? One of our job, one of our functions is to do that. And so, you know, one of the things, do not grow, grow weary in doing good. One of the greatest things that you can do is start increasing your giving to your spiritual covering, okay? Here's one of the really cool things that I reckon you should do regardless of where you are on the wealth spectrum, okay? You should consider calling up your pastor this afternoon, tomorrow, whenever you listen to this, and saying, hey, pastor, listen, uh, I am fully behind you, and I'm a business person, so I feel called to help you financially. I may or may not be able to right now, but please understand that as my business grows, I've got your back, and I'm going to be part of you know, shouldering this burden for you and doing good works and making sure your vision is covered, right? And then as your business grows, you'll be able to go and do that. And it's, it's, it's a phenomenal feeling, by the way, to be able to partner with your spiritual covering and, and give where you can. It's, it's phenomenal. So you should, you, should be, you should be doing that, okay? Um, and it is a little bit fun. If you go back to Exodus 17, 12, you'll see a picture of this working incredibly well. You'll know the story, right? Um, Joshua goes to battle. Moses is up on the hill, right? So that's, that's a kind of like... Um, that's a picture of the marketplace uh, and, the, and the spiritual oversight. It's, you know, it's like the kings and the priests, right? The people down, down doing the work and our ministers upstairs up on the hill not doing much. But that's okay. It's, a, it's an important part of the job. And you remember, God says to Moses, every time you lift your arms, uh, Joshua will be winning the battle. Every time you drop your hands, Joshua will lose the battle. Uh, and so that happens a few times. And then ultimately, Aaron and Hur come along. They put a rock under him and they hold up his hands. That is, a, that is a picture of the symbiotic relationship between the marketplace and the spiritual covering working incredibly well. We lift up their hands when we, need to, when we need to, and when they are interceding for us, we win in battle, all right? So we've got to make sure that one of the large things that we're doing is funding our spiritual covering, and you should call your pastor this week and say, I'm so for you. In fact, Andrew Denton, uh, I learned this cool phrase from him. He said, the pastor sets the vision the business people set the pace. And I really liked that because practically we can bring more, we can build businesses, bring more money to the table and get their vision done faster if we wish. And so you should be part of that in your church. All right, number four, uh, in terms of doing good work before we do, if you've got a question, uh, you know, uh, put your phone number in the comments below or send a message to the Business Greenhouse Facebook page and one of us will reach out to you and get you on the show. Do that now. Um, number four uh, way that we can build on doing good works is using our influence, okay? So what do I mean by that? I mean, right now, you could have influence in the world around you. Serving on a board, sitting on a community group, whatever, being on the parent-teacher committee, um, part of a charity, running for council, running for mayor, running for state politics, federal politics, being in the Senate, uh, Congress if you're American. Um, <clears throat> we should be looking for opportunities. That's, that is an opportunity of doing good works, okay, um, is our ability to influence the world around us. And so, you know, I'm looking at that thinking every single one of us has an opportunity for influence. And as our business grows, our influence will grow too. As you build a bigger business, the invites will come for you to have a greater level of influence and a greater level of say in the world around you. And we should be taking those. You know, it, it, it doesn't always require a check for us to do good works. One of the greatest good works that we can do is go and be amongst a bunch of secular people and help be salt and light in their decision-making process and, you know, create policies that are more in keeping with the kingdom of God. That would be a really good use of your time. And so, you, you know, you can be looking out right now for levels of influence and opportunities for influence for you to go and shape the way people think. It could start small where you're helping one person over coffee once a month, but that will increase over time and your influence and your business will increase and you will be able to shape the minds of lots and lots of people. 
Remember, we're not trying to hoard it over them, but we have the answers to life's questions. And, uh, and it would be crazy for us not to share them, something like what we're doing here on this show. All right, guys, point number five, the one you've been waiting for. Um, another way that we do good works is obviously doing our assignment. This is the big end of town now, right? There were good works destined for you before you were ever created. Um, Jeremiah 29, 11 tells us that he had a plan for us before we were even conceived. Uh, in fact, isn't it absolutely magic that your parents conceived your body, but God conceived your soul before the foundation of the earth? You might want to tweet that one out. Um, and I think that's just a beautiful thing because before all of this was created around us, you were chosen, called, and given a DNA. And that DNA is specific to you, and it's a beautiful thing. And I've got one, and uh, Pat's got one, and Craig's got one, of these guys, everybody's got one, you've got one. And inside of there, there is a natural gifting and a natural set of talents that needs to be used to unlock something on earth during your time here. It's not by mistake that you're living in this day. He didn't get, like, you know, he could have given you 1925 or 1836 or 1732 or some BC time. He could have done that, but he didn't. He wanted you here right now at this time with a certain set of skills to be building a business, to have a certain level of influence, to, to achieve something great for the kingdom. Ooh, I get a little bit of preachy up in this place. All right, remember, questions to us, and then we'll get you on the show. We'll get those answered. Um, so, so I wonder, if you don't know what that is, by the way, you will go to your grave unfulfilled. You've got to work out what your God-given assignment is. And they chop and change, and there's different deviations in your assignment throughout your life. But, but getting to the end of your life and not investing time on your assignment, in the absence of an assignment and influence, you'll end up just building businesses for yourself. And it'll just be about what you can get out of it. And the problem with that is, is that's what the world does. So we're no different. So, so you've got to work out your assignment. You know, for me, I know what mine is. I, I knew from, from the time I came to Christ, I spent the time to sit with the Lord to ask the question. And he showed me, you'll start a training academy for Christian entrepreneurs. And so that's why we're doing all of this. That's why we put this out twice a week. There is, there is this much economic gain, right, um, for me doing this show today. Right? We're not selling anything, there's no advertising space, there's, there's no call to action, there's no funnel you're going into. It is just us pouring out, running those events every year, going around the country, da 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 da, da. Okay, why? It's my assignment. And my other businesses and my other services prosper because we do what we're called to do. You know, and they come and go. If you followed us for a little while, you know that we did a national tour, went around the country a couple of times and spoke at churches and went as a family. Um, at the moment, there's a little sideline assignment within the assignment, and we are helping build a discipleship training center for East Arnhem Land, um, which came out of our trip last year. Um, and, uh, and so we're in the process of setting that discipleship training center up at the moment and, uh, and all the fun that goes along with those things. So this is the good works. And, you know, for me personally, I'm always on the lookout. And we cannot grow weary because at the right time, there's a harvest. And, uh, and it actually says about not getting caught out and not dropping the ball somewhere in that scripture. For we will reap at harvest time if we do not give up. Listen, our life is not our own. We, we are called to business. We're called for influence. We're called to be agents of change. But our life is not our own. And we gave that away when we chose Christ. And so why would we give up? Just because it gets tough. At the end of the day, I'm going to go to heaven. And so... That spurs me on to not want to give up doing good works. Well, I hope that was a blessing for you. Did you know that this show goes onto Facebook, it goes onto YouTube, it goes onto Instagram, it goes onto iTunes, and it goes onto LinkedIn? Do me a favor, would you? Tell more people about the show so that I can spread the message. Love you. See ya.